I'm, I'm Lisa Ma. I work at Hub with Eric Lee uh, as the Chief Growth Officer. Uh, it's my honor to welcome you today. So today we have uh, uh, serial entrepreneur founders, David Meltzer and Eric Lee with us. And we're gonna, the theme for today is about intentions for 2021 success. So we are going to have the first um, segment be uh, the fireside chat uh, uh, with um, David and Eric. And the second half will be a virtual networking breakout so that you get to network and meet one another. Uh, so, uh, so just to introduce you to uh, David Meltzer, in case you, you don't already know him. Uh, David is the co-founder of Sports One Marketing. Uh, he's a consultant and business coach. He's a keynote speaker. Uh, and he's also a three-time best-selling author. Uh, and Eric Lee, co-founder of LinkedIn and also the founding CTO and founder of Hub and co-founder of Karma Chat. Uh, and I mentioned I'm Lisa uh, and uh, I'm also a super connector. So if you wanna connect, let me know. I will have, have to connect you. So, uh, and of course you are here and so feel free to connect. Um, so, so yeah, so I'm gonna hand it off here. So here's, here's some questions of the day we're gonna answer when we get into breakout rooms. And so that with that, I'm going to hand off to David. So David, thank you. I'm going to spotlight you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. I'm just amazed uh, after almost 12 months of the pandemic, you know, how I think people are underestimating the access that they have. I'm always amazed when I'm looking here at Hub, you know, before the pandemic, if someone would say I could sit down with Eric uh, and ask him questions, you know, it's an incredible opportunity. So uh, if you don't take advantage of it tonight, shame on you. And if you're not telling other people uh, of the opportunity, because I especially, you know, admire Eric for what he does with Hub and Lisa, but we're giving so much uh, powerful information and, and access. And I think we're starting to get spoiled on Zoom because it's so easy and there's so many people jumping in and out. You see Elon Musk, hanging out and Grant and, you know, Tom and all these people. And I think to myself, you know, wow, I wish when I was a young entrepreneur, I could just hop online real quick and ask Eric Lee a quick question that could change my life. Uh, and there's a lot of seeds being planted uh, on this platform that will grow humongous trees. So uh, please, I'm encouraging everyone, something I teach, something I preach, you cannot ask big enough and you cannot ask often enough and take advantage of the access that you have here on Hub and anywhere else where you see people that sit in the situation you wanna be in. Remember the easiest way to get to where you wanna go is to ask somebody that's already there for directions. Uh, Eric, I'd love for you to maybe share some of your insight on this newfound accessibility. And do you feel there's an entitlement taking place where people aren't really valuing uh, the amount of access and information that's available. Hey, David, I, uh, first of all, I just want to say that um, uh, it, it's always a pleasure to connect with you. Maybe we can uh, make this more interactive where, uh, you know, I get to ask you some questions I back instead of you uh, always asking me the questions to make it more interesting. Uh, so, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased to be here with everyone today uh, in uh, 2021 here. And um, uh, you know, it's it's uh, really a, a fascinating medium, isn't it? This this kind of uh, virtual medium, whether it's uh, video or audio, to be able to you know connect with people um, in in this way. Um, I, I know that um, you know there's a lot of talk out there about kind of like uh, Zoom fatigue and, and and stuff like that, but I I do think that there's actually within all that um, you know really meaningful interactions that could be had. Uh, with this medium, like for example, um, I just remember just before you know Christmas, you know a lot of us were on the the holiday party, and uh, that that was kind of very that was really cool, you know to to sort of you know celebrate with a group of people that you know um, have been on the journey with us for a better part of that year last year, and uh, just to you know kind of have a really kind of happy send off. Um, you know, with uh, people before, you know, we all went uh, on our holidays. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's the fatigue is, is, is you know, not so much uh, because of the medium, but it's really 
you know, just the kind of topics that we, you know, cover. And we, if we kind of take time to, you know, uh, you know, not only talk about work, but talk about, you know, some fun stuff, um, you know, that makes all the difference in the world. So I, I look forward to occasions like this where, you know, I'm not talking about work all the time, you know, and uh, just, just uh, you know, talking to, you know, people as people, you know, as a person. So uh, that, that, that's how I feel. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, more of us can, uh, you know, can, can do it, right? Uh, just kind of get involved in this kind of experience and, and um, you know, not necessarily, you know, kind of, uh, you know, leave, um, you know, people out. I, I know there's a lot of people out there who are still kind of hurting and, and, and suffering. And, and um, uh, but uh, I, I think, you know, as humans, we're also very resilient. And so, you know, we, we, we should, you know, adapt and take advantage of new situations that we find ourselves in. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, do you have a question for me since we'll make this more interactive? <laughs> yeah, sure thing, David. Um, well, I'm, I'm really just curious, you know, uh, what, uh, if you have any like New Year's resolutions and, you know, what, what might you be doing differently or, you know, better uh, from your personal standpoint this year? You know, throughout the year, I'm studying these different habits and disciplines and the shifts of the paradigm from where I, I love to be and look at where I've been a hypocrite. And, you know, through weighted balance, I <clears throat> thought I valued my family. Uh, <clears throat> and for me, I, it just was so enlightening that as much as I thought I was a good father and a good husband and I was spending enough time with my consistent time that I was spending every single day, seven days a week, I was missing out. Um, and so I, I was missing out on so much I didn't realize, you know, I even said for the Super Bowl, this is the first time in about 25 years I haven't been at the Super Bowl. And I said to my wife, I said, someone could call me and offer me a sideline pass again and access to the Super Bowl this year. Uh, but if I could stay at home, you know, with the six of us, my, my own family, and just have dinner, that'd be fine with me. And I don't think I would have ever said that, you know, I always talked about a weighted balance and that, you know, my family would understand, but yeah, they definitely understood. But what I didn't understand is how much I was missing out um, and how valuable that was and how much it meant to me. And I hope that as we open back up uh, that I can maintain that uh, level of importance in my family. Uh, you get so active and, you know, helping so many other people that, you know, I forget why I'm here sometimes. And I'm here to support my family first. Um, and in order to do that, I have a list of things like taking care of my own health and making a certain amount of money and, and other things I need to take care of my family. Uh, but I have to remember, you know, how valuable and how much I enjoy it. I, I will tell you, I know I've been developing these TV shows and they're taking off. I told my wife, I wish I could do a TV show, Dinner with the Meltzers, because it would be the hit smash. The problem is they probably take away my kids from me after they watch the show. <laughs> but it, it is a blast. So my New Year's resolution is not being afraid of being a hypocrite, where you keep on telling yourself, you think you know what you know today, but keep exploring what you don't know and keep changing your values. Keep changing them and be okay with it and tell people that you change them and what you told them last year, sell that book because it's worthless. You got a new book for them, something that really can help. Yeah, I love that. That's, that, that's so awesome. I, I think, I think uh, you know, many of us have had very similar uh, realizations um, as, as well. Um, yeah, I, I know. I know for myself. I mean, it's uh, the last year's kind of been a reset. You know, there's certain things that I'm doing now that I'd never used to do. Um, things that uh, I don't do anymore. Um, you know, one of one of the positives, for example, is uh, I'm, uh, I'm 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 biking with my kids uh, on the on the weekends. You know, we used to drive someplace, and you know, we, you could go you know far where there were you know other people, but. Uh, can't kind of do that anymore. So, uh, you know, biking is a good, good thing. It's like, it, you know, spend time with your kids and then also uh, get some exercise as well. And um, one thing I don't regret at all is the commute time. I've, I'm saving so much time driving uh, to work, you know, driving to meetings and back from meetings. 
man, it's it's been really, really great. So when things, you know, get back to normal, I'm sort of, you know, thinking, gee, I wish I could really eliminate that commute time because I don't I don't need it. It's really wasting a lot of time. So that's for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I also was thinking about uh, that transition. And I think, you know, a lot of people should, this is the time that you should, you know, consider, well, you stop. That we should consider uh, what we want to do as we open things up more. Um, as you're stating up uh, with the com commute for you, I think a lot of uh, leaders in businesses, people who are starting their businesses can uh, really benefit by planning for the fact that we're not always going to be in this situation. And there's huge opportunities uh, determined upon your own capabilities, the skills, knowledge, and desire that you have within those capabilities and the business that you have. And, you know, I encourage everyone, this is the time to start planning for 2022, because we all know by 2022, we'll be able to go into office buildings. It may not be June, it may not be September, but I am, you know, a higher percentage certain than ever that by 2022, we'll have some decisions to make on how we want to you know, move forward with our lives. And I think this is the time, you know, January, February, that we start looking at 2022 of how we're gonna work through this transition because as much as it was thrown upon us, it'll be a gradual evolutionary change that you can really take advantage of if you start uh, aligning and finding the synergistic supplementary capabilities to those uh, eventual certainties that we are going to be able to go ahead and hug each other uh, by 2022. So, so we have some questions, by the okay. way, from the audience. So, uh, Corey, uh, I invite you to open your mic to ask a question if you like. This is about access here, so we give access. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, well, thank you, Lisa. I'm just I'm so bullish on blockchain as a technology, and I'm really starting to understand more about how blockchain is going to be used and being used by Hub. So I just kind of wonder that beyond cryptocurrency, what both of you, since you're kind of leaders in that space as well, what you see some implications of blockchain beyond crypto, and even if it's just specifically for the trust factor and kind of that connection factor with Hub or beyond. Um, you know, I look at things like guacamole on the blockchain and all kinds of crazy applications for that technology. And yeah, I don't, it, if that doesn't serve the audience and then, you know, we can, we can punt that one. But if, if it's a relevant question, I would love to hear. I'll give a short answer to that. Uh, you know, Corey, I'd, I'd much rather answer that question on the, the podcast we're going to do, uh, you know, soon. So uh, hopefully that's uh, something that uh, those who are interested in uh, that uh, can, uh, can participate in. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, for me, that's, that's kind of a work question, right? So um, I, uh, you know, would, would love to spend this, this time talking about more, more valuable things uh, besides uh, work, but uh, just, just a brief statement about that. Um, so, you know, blockchain, it's, uh, you know, something maybe people have heard about for years and, um, you know, through the holidays, there's been a lot of uh, talk about, um, you know, Bitcoin, uh, which is this other thing that you've related thing that you probably you know, heard about. And uh, so, you know, there's some new things on the horizon, you know, from, uh, from the technology world and uh, blockchain and Bitcoin are, you know, definitely some of those things. And, uh, you know, I, I think there's still, you know, a, a lot of people who, um, you know, don't, um, you know, understand them. They kind of heard the buzzwords and so forth, but I, I encourage everyone to, uh, you know, look into it further and, you uh, uh, maybe, you know, just become, you know, more aware of uh, that. And um, I, I wrote, a, wrote an article uh, recently um, on uh, Cointelegraph, which um, we'll, we'll definitely share um, about, you know, where the potential of this can go beyond, you know, crypto. Um, and uh, I, I hope that people will, you know, take a look at that as well. And uh, I gave, uh, you know, some insights in, in that article. It took me a while to write because it was, <laughs> it was it was hard to kind of summarize everything that all the everyone all the craziness in this industry that has been going on um you know to boil it down to, to some words that you know kind of are universal but um but uh, I, I do believe it's gonna you know impact our lives in the in the coming years just kind of like the uh internet has you know kind of um 
impacted people's lives. So I, I definitely encourage people to look at it. And uh, yeah, Corey, you and I can uh, talk more about it on, on our podcast, which I am very excited for. I'd just like to add real quickly, not to get into details, but you should be paying attention and giving attention to blockchain. Uh, and for me, two of the areas that I'm studying, uh, because that's the period of time I think right now that we all should be studying, paying attention and intention. One is just personal brand and the effect of blockchain on your personal brand. Mm -hmm. um, and two, merchant services. Uh, because I think in the merchant services space, the trillions of dollars that are spent in that area, uh, there'll be some uh, tr truly uh, huge opportunities. And I think if you start studying it now, you may actually be able to take advantage of some of those uh, as we learn more. Yeah, just to add, so um, we're actually planning more blockchain events, inviting uh, blockchain entrepreneurs to come do these virtual networking and fireside chats. So we're going to have a lot more events to answer, to go deeper dive as well. So which is exciting. So, um, and and I will share the link of Eric's article uh, on in the event. I mean, I shared it on the event. However, I encourage everyone to read it. It's such a thoughtful and introspective article. Uh, it talks about a blockchain, and cryptocurrency, and going mainstream. So, uh, so we have another more question. So, uh, Tony, would you like to ask your question? Thank you so much, Lisa, you incredible super connector. And thank you, Eric and David for taking the time. Uh, just a fun question. And I think I may have an idea of what you both may answer, but, um, if you had all the time and money in the world, what would you be doing? <laughs> I'll let you go first, David. Yeah. I love that question. You, you may not believe me. But to me, that's the definition of faith. When you can extract out, you know, time and money, the, the man-made constructs from your life, this will illustrate your faith. And I will tell you, Tony, that it's taken me years to answer this question this way. I would be doing the exact same thing I'm doing now. And if you're not living your life that way, and it took me a long time to say, I gotta learn how to love what I'm doing because I don't love everything I do, but I've learned to love everything I do. And if I can't learn to love it, then in that challenge leaves me, I dump it. I find somebody else to do it or I just give up on it. But my first step is learn to love it. And I would do every single thing without those man-made constructs of time and money in my life. Yeah, David, I really love that answer. I mean, it resonates so much with me. Um, you know, I, it just reminded me, I, you know, my, my, my first reaction to that question was, you know, oh my gosh, I, I don't know. I, I've been working so, so much that I haven't really had a chance to uh, think about that. But, um, you know, I think it's really right. Like, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be able to, you know, work on things that um, are really, you know, passionate for me, you know, that I'm really passionate about. And uh, you know, I think that's uh, that that's really a gift. I wake up every day. I've got my own um, frustrations and challenges as well. But the, the fact that I'm, you know, sticking with it is, um, I think, uh, something that is you know really a, a gift, um, you know, that 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 I have. Um, but you know, away from work, you know, what what's important um, uh, in in the spare uh, minutes that I have, uh, you know. Uh, and, and at nights and uh, on the weekends when I'm, you know, thinking about what else would I rather be doing. I feel like um, relationships are really important, you know, and um, I would love to uh, spend more time uh, on, on relationships. I, I really enjoy, um, you know, uh, spending time with friends. Uh, I honestly haven't had a chance to do that in, uh, in many years now, and particularly over the last year with uh, the pandemic. Um, but th th I think those are the most valuable kind of time, you know, moments, right? When you have the luxury of time to go and really, you know, create and um, build and nurture and, and, and support other people, you know, which, which I think is um, a very fulfilling, um, you know, experience. Um, so that, that, that's what I would do is, is really kind of spend more time, you know, whether it's with, um, you know, friends or with my kids and just really try to, you know, understand, you know, what they're going through and, and, and try to be supportive um, of them. We have another question from the audience. So Don, would you like to express your question? 
Thank, thank you so much, Lisa. I really, this, I mean, these things are like so precious. And, and I think that, you know, what you do is, is, is super, super needed and really appreciate that. And, and, and the same Eric and, and Dave, thanks for contributing your time, taking time with us. So, you know, you, you were saying earlier, Eric, about um, saving so much time and commuting and traveling. And, you know, now you, you know, everything is more virtual and then Zoom. And how, how are you guys uh, multiplying that saved time now? You, there's more intense, uh, more intensity and focus, but what, what are some uh, advantages that you're finding in that 24 hour, you know, that we all have? What's some of the focus and, and uh, things you're multiplying? First again, Eric. <laughs> you want me to go? What do you want me to go? Yeah, go ahead, Eric. We'll take turns. Oh, that's a that's a tough one. I I, I don't think I've been very wise in uh, making you know use of uh, reclaimed time. I mean, if if anything, I I, I feel like I've just uh, you know um, worked more and and uh, you know made made that uh, you know of it. I I do. Um, I try to be a more 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 focused these days, you know, in terms of being more deliberate about you know how I'm spending my time, and um, you know I, I do think that this kind of boundary between you know um, you know work, working from home and 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 you know having to deal with people kind of gives you a better way of kind of um, you know separating you know what what you what you should focus on and what what maybe sort of you know the distractions and um so i've uh, I, I've, I've tried to focus in on the things that you know hopefully are really important to to work on and and and, and try to kind of cut everything out you know everything else out um and um you know th th i think this kind of remote work actually gives you the opportunity to uh, kind of do that better to kind of control that better because um, you know, you, you are, you know, mainly, you know, sitting, sitting by yourself and, and, um, um, you know, being able to kind of focus on, on, on things. Um, so I, I've benefited from that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that's the answer to your question, but, um, that's, uh, how I felt about the last year. I'm kind of on the other end of the spectrum, uh, blessed that my business was already moving towards what I call the stage theory. Uh, because I knew and flew so much uh, 200 days a year, and I was in the process of capturing all the things that I did, modifying it, amplifying it, so I could perpetuate the lessons and the stories, either real time or uh, in different formats, so that people could learn and I could share to empower people to make money, help people, and have fun themselves. Two things occurred. One, an incredible amount of efficiency of how much I could stage. Uh, you know, I no way did I realize coming into 2020 with my plan of this capture, modify, amplify, perpetuate, could I think, you know, if you saw my calendar, sometimes which is 31, uh, I think, different pieces of content that is captured, that is just significant. I mean, I have CEOs and athletes, celebrities, entertainers and big shows and little shows, but, it, you know, speeches and masterminds and hubs, it's incredible. And so not only do I do probably 10 to 20 times as much uh, in the storytelling and lesson giving, but my favorite part is the expense. Uh, you know, I love to feed people. I love to feed myself. I love to stay in nice hotels. I love to fly. And, you know, I look every month at the economics of my business and it, it's almost embarrassing because I, you know, I sold my office building. I, I don't have that. I mean, I went from employees and overhead to just employees and hardly any overhead and everyone's happy. So to two things to me, the amount of lessons and stories I can tell, which is in my mission, and then just how inexpensive it is to do. Uh, that's my only fear for the future is someone's gonna make me fly somewhere and pay for everything. <laughs> That's funny. I, I used to work in consulting, so I understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have time for one more question before we go to the breakout. So Kalu, would you like to ask your question? Sure. Thank you. This is really enjoyable. 
somebody asked me that question. It was so good. It stayed with me. I'm walking with it. So I like to sort of pass it on now. And especially in light of how the world is changing, you know, we've been humbled by the pandemic and we're probably learning more than we think we are from this time. And so the question is now with all this, what's worth wanting? Like, what should we even want to want? How to look at that? How much has your world changed? And however it lands, it's sort of not an easy question in a way, but I think it's a really good direction setter. So. I love it. I get to go first this time in the alternate worlds. Um, I have a, a system for this. You know, I, I believe if you take inventory of what and then go to who, how, and, why, and now and why, you'll know. For, for me, every day I determine my what first. What do I want personally? What do I want experientially? What do I want to give, produce? And what do I want to receive? Which was the most difficult of all the things for me because I had a real difficult time receiving. Um, and when I take inventory of those values every day and know my what, uh, and take it day by day, once again, like I told you, not being afraid to be a hypocrite and saying, man, what I wanted yesterday was stupid. This is what I want today. I learned some lessons. I tell people all the time, if you feel stupid in the morning after what you did yesterday, good for you. Cause that means you're living life, you're learning. If you think you know everything, shame on you. And I spent a majority of my younger years thinking I knew everything because I made a lot of money. That's not true. I wake up, I love the fact every day I wake up at a higher frequency and look at myself and go, man, I can't believe you thought that. Take inventory of your values. Don't be afraid of being a hypocrite. The what will be a daily what, and you can move on to the who, the how, the now, and the why. It'll all come naturally from if you know your what. I think too many people don't know their what and they're worried about their why. Mm, intriguing, intriguing. Uh, so, so for me, the, the way that I would answer that question is that I think the uh, pandemic has, has really um, kind of forced me to look at um, my, my values and my priorities in, in life. It, it, it's really in many ways sort of forced this kind of uh, cleansing, you know, to, uh, you know, what are, the, what are the priorities like purely that are, um, that are important? You know, so um, it's it's really kind of placed a lot of constraints on us. You know, the things that we used to do. You know, a lot of those things we can't you know do these days. And so it makes you know one question: What what can I do? What should I do? What what do I need to go out of my way to do? Um, and um, uh, you know, uh, really be you know one of the topics of this uh, you know session is intention and. It, it, it's really forced an examination of that. And I think what I realized was that, you know, when you, when you don't have to commute, when you don't have to do those things that, you know, are really not as important, you can kind of focus more on the things that, you know, are, are important. So, um, you know, just going back to, you know, what I said earlier about relationships, I've realized that's, you know, actually, you know, rather, rather important, you know, for me, and whether it's family or, you know, uh, relationships in the outside world. Um, I've, I've, I've realized that, um, you know, work is very important um, for me, you know, that's some, something that I value a lot. And so I've been able to, uh, you know, continue to, you know, uh, work and to, you know, spend more time in that direction. Um, and so that's, those, those are the things that, you know, I've realized are, you know, actually, you know, quite important, you know, for me. And so I think it's going to be different for, you know, every, everyone. And so I think this is a really great opportunity, this moment in time to really kind of like reevaluate how you're spending time, right? That, that's where, that's how you place value, right? In terms of the, you're spending time on the things that, you know, you, you value and, um, and, 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 and kind of take stock and, and, and figure out those things that you wanna keep and uh, those things that maybe, you know, you, you wanna chuck. Um, and, and, and so when, you know, things, um, uh, maybe, you know, return to some kind of normalcy, um, you know, I, I hope that, um, you know, myself and that we all have a chance to really hang on to those things that we really value and, and, and say, you know what, you know, those things that we really didn't care about, um, we don't, we don't have to do, we can do it in a new way. And, um, I think that's, I think that's what I look forward to when, when things kind of, you know, go back to, uh, you know, a bit more normalcy.
uh, in that way. Hey, thank you. Thank you for the great advice, uh, Eric and, and David. Actually, one of my favorite quote is, uh, I don't know what I don't know, but I want to know. So, uh, so it's, it's really great to hear from everybody's, uh, you know, everyone's wisdom here. And um, so now we move on to the second part. Now we want all of you to network and get to know each other. Um, I mean, what inspired these virtual networking is actually, um, Eric and I went on this blockchain conference a couple of years ago to Shanghai. And it was like this massive conference in Shanghai with thousands of people, but then we ended up hosting this VIP networking gathering uh, at the hotel where the, the conference was at. And basically all the people that everybody wanted to meet was actually at our VIP gathering. And so uh, it was really fun. And then, so we figure why not just do this virtually and connect Silicon Valley to around the world, right? That way we give access to all the people that uh, inspire us and that can accelerate us. And now with you know the ability to to do uh, virtual events, we, we can just do this so easily now. So literally, like in the last year, um, I think I, I, I think I may have connected up to ten thousand people <laughs> actually virtually uh, using Hub, right? So Hub makes it really easy, and so it's a Hub is a referral network. And I see a lot of you actually that I, I've met through many communities, right? So this is the way we get to know each other, and that we find what we seek and who we seek. So with that in mind. I would love to invite you to join the virtual breakout rooms. Um